tanker Flight 52 is in trouble. The crew is exhausted. They're over New York City and almost out of fuel. Are we cleared to land now? Yes, sir, we are cleared to land. Tell me things louder because I'm not hearing it. They're cleared to land. Soon the nightmare will be over. Gear down. Glide slow! Break 500 feet. The captain desperately searches for the runway at Kennedy Airport. Lights! But he can't find it. The runway, where is it? Don't see it. I don't see it. Now they're battling violent wind shear. This is the wind shear. They're going to crash. Get the landing gear up. Landing gear up. The plane has hardly a drop of fuel left. They cannot land. Flight 52 is about to crash somewhere over New York. How could that happen? Even the world's finest air crash detectives will never agree about who is to blame. Relevance of testimony. South southwest of Kennedy Airport, with a track brought up. January the 25th, 1990. Air traffic controllers have been nervously tracking a massive low pressure system approaching the northeast coast of America. There was a system moving through the Great Lakes, moving east. There was a couple other systems converging. And a lot of times they'll converge in the New York area there and the whole northeast will go down. The weather is already near the safe minimum to land a plane. Flights will have to be cancelled or delayed. The terminals will be choked with thousands of angry passengers. Despite the terrible weather, the air traffic managers in Washington, D.C. order controllers at Kennedy Airport in New York to set a high landing rate. Air travel is vital, and they're under tremendous pressure to delay or cancel as few flights as possible. There's pressure because that's the business they're in. The, the business is moving passengers from A to B. That's what the airlines are paid, and the controllers are paid to help that work. Management in Washington, D.C. is pressuring New York to take on more flights than they feel is safe. Despite the weather, they want them to land 33 aircraft per hour. We don't like it. We're going to have the worst possible conditions for landing aircraft at Kennedy Airport. We can't use runway 13. We have to use runway 22 because of the conflicts with other airports. And because of the winds. We don't like the rate of 33 an hour. 33 is it, and you'll take it. Scores of overseas flights with thousands of passengers are already on their way. They have to land somehow. What are we going to do with foreign traffic? We'll just give them airborne holes. Well, we, we know we're going to have wind shear and missed approaches, and this is going to be a very bad day. I've got very bad vibes about this day. No. 33. You'll shake it. And that set the scenario at about 7 or 8 in the morning before we left Medellin. At 7 or 8 in the morning, the scenario was set for this accident to happen. But within the next few hours, fog and low clouds have closed the main runway at JFK. Now, whatever their bosses say, the controllers won't be able to land 33 aircraft an hour. Nearly 4,000 kilometers to the south in Colombia, it's a warm, sunny day with not a cloud in the sky. Avianca Flight 52 is now boarding passengers for New York, among them Miriam and Luis Montoya and their two young daughters. After a short business trip, Nesta Zarato is traveling home to New York. I received a telephone call telling me that if I could be in the airport in half an hour, and not ask any questions or request anything, uh, I would get on, on the direct flight to New York. In the cockpit, flight engineer Matthias Moyano monitors the loading of about 6,000 kilos of fuel, making a total of some 36,000 kilos. Enough for the journey, plus an extra two hours flying time. 
Bianca 052 Heavy, request clearance for takeoff, runway 11. Just after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Avianca 52 takes off from Medellin with its maximum allowable fuel load. The Colombian airliner heads north for the United States with 158 passengers and crew. By early evening, deteriorating weather has made flight operations at JFK appalling. Continue to the left, heading 230 vectors and holding for Cameron again. With no way of turning back the overseas flights, aircraft are forced to circle round endlessly, waiting to land. Turn left. There is a wind shear alert on final at 1,500 feet. Turn left. Heading Controllers work frantically to keep track of the growing number of aircraft now in the skies over New York. Airlines 251, you are clear to land. Jeff K, any idea how long those delays are going to be? I talked to someone else over there, no idea. Now, I'm holding over here, delays indefinite due to the weather. The, 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 the traffic's missing the approaches, they're going around. I, I just can't give you a good answer. Your guess would be as good as mine, that's the best I can tell you. JFK Airport in New York now only has one runway for landing and aircraft are queuing up to use it. In the near blackout conditions, several planes have to abort their landings, which only adds to the delays. On Flight 52, they know none of this. The crew neither receives nor requests the weather for New York or for their alternate airport, Boston. It's inconceivable to me that someone with a responsibility of other people's lives would fly into a deteriorating condition without checking about, hey, do we have a way out of this place? Avianca 52 enters the airspace near Norfolk, Virginia. After four hours in the air, New York City is now less than 40 minutes away. 51-year-old Captain Laureano Caviedes is a seasoned pilot who's been flying with Avianca for 27 years. But his English is poor. All communications with air traffic control will be handled by the 28-year-old co-pilot, Mauricio Klotz. The third man in the cockpit, flight engineer Matthias Moyano, is experienced but like co-pilot Klotz, he has only four months of flight time in the 707. They were a highly experienced flight crew who had been into New York several times uh, previously on behalf of Avianca. So they were familiar with the route and the procedures and highly experienced pilots. Washington, good evening. Avianca 052 Heavy, flight level 370. Avianca 052 Heavy, Washington Center, Roger. Avianca 052, I'd like you to make a right 360 degree turn. And I need you to get a pencil ready for holding instructions at Norfolk. Okay, 360 degree right turn at Norfolk, Avianca 052 Heavy. Avianca 052, you ready to copy your holding instructions? Go ahead, sir. All right, Avianca 052, you are clear to the Norfolk Vortac. Hold south on 174 with right turns and 20 mile legs. Flight 52's troubles are about to begin. Okay. They're being diverted out over the Atlantic Ocean near Norfolk, Virginia, and placed in a holding pattern. Here, the aircraft will fly an elliptical racetrack pattern while it waits for further instructions from air traffic control. They don't know about the bad weather ahead, but with enough fuel for more than two hours of flying, there's no cause for alarm. This area in the northeast corridor of the United States is one of the most congested airspaces in the world. Incoming traffic from overseas is routinely directed through a pipeline of controllers before being cleared to land at one of three major airports in the New York area. JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. Tonight, Avianca 52 will come under the direction of more than six controllers each of whom is trying to get the aircraft now circling over New York safely down on the ground. We just got off the line. It's uh, indefinite holding at this time. Zero eight zero. 
We just had three missed approaches on 2-2, right? We just went below the minimums. We just had four misses on 2-2, right? Which is our primary runway. The visibility is getting worse, and it's worsening. All right, how many are holding? Well, we're still holding the 12 or 13 we had earlier. We're expecting some pretty lengthy delays in another hour or so. While air traffic controllers try to cope with the increasing backlog of flights, Avianca Flight 52 circles for 19 minutes over the Virginia coast, waiting for permission to continue its journey to New York. Avianca 052, expedite descent through level 33. Just leave flight level 330 within three minutes, please. Okay, we'll leave 330 in, um, within three minutes. Avianca 052 heavy. The Avianca jet is on its way to New York at last, but they have no idea of the trouble that awaits them. Avianca Flight 52 is on its final approach to New York, unaware that conditions for landing at JFK are barely above the safe limits to land a plane. It's a pitch black night with heavy mist, rain, and sudden violent winds. This is central. I was wondering how your weather was doing up there. It's pretty bad at this point. We got all sorts of wind shears and mist approaches. Due to not seeing a runway. You're still trying on a 30 rate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rather unsuccessfully at this point. The winds are starting to pick up. 20% of the guys attempted approaches went on to miss. The plane has now almost used up the fuel planned for the journey and will shortly start eating into its reserves. The crew is considering diverting to their alternate airport in Boston, just 340 kilometers from New York. Washington Center, Avianca 052 Heavy. Avianca 052 Heavy, go ahead. Do you have any information about delays to Boston? Boston, I'll check that, sir. Thank you. The Washington controller asks his assistant to check on the conditions at Boston, but he gets distracted juggling other aircraft and forgets all about Avianca's request. While Flight 52 is left waiting for an answer that never comes, their precious fuel supply is slowly draining away. Ask him about Boston again. Did you ask about delays at Boston, or are we going to approach Kennedy? Okay, Avianca 052, it looks as though New York Center may have to hold you for possibly up to 30 minutes. Expect clearance on course, just momentarily, with, uh, stands right now, an additional holding of, at most, 30 minutes. With that in mind, do you want to check on an alternate airport? I believe Boston is. I'll check on Boston. Okay. We're now descending to 190 and expecting information about Boston. Okay, Avianca 052, I've been advised Boston is open and accepting traffic if you do need that as an alternate airport. Okay, stand by a minute. Flight engineer Moyano begins to calculate how much fuel they'll have after an additional 30 minutes of holding. Even before they can respond, Washington Control directs them to another holding location. Avianca 052 Heavy, make a right turn now to intercept the Cameron 2 arrival. Cleared on course. Maintain flight level 190. Flight 52 is now off the New Jersey coast in an area known as Cameron, less than 72 kilometers from Kennedy Airport, but it seems as far away as ever. During all those holding times, uh, I was praying and say, trying to see where we're going to land. I mean, where are we going to be on the ground? I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. I apologize for the delay, but it appears we're going to be holding as we wait our turn to land in New York. Please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened and we should have you on the ground shortly. Thank you. There was a point where the captain announced that there was traffic in, 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 uh, in the New York City area and that we would be on hold for a while and that he would get back to us. It will be the last communication the crew has with the passengers. Flight 52's situation now goes from bad to worse. Hey, Bianca 052, descend and maintain 14,000. It's handed over to the New York controllers, who, even on a good day, can be intimidating. And today is not a good day. There are up to 39 aircraft trying to land and dozens more on the ground waiting to take off. Hey, Bianca 052, expect for the clearance at 0139. 
Bianca 052 Heavy, roger. Tired and frustrated, the crew of Avianca 52 continues to circle the crowded airspace over New York while they wait for clearance to land. After more than five hours in the air, Luis Montoya is anxious to get his wife and two young daughters on the ground and back to their home in Queens. As the flight started to prolong, we started to feel uneasy. My wife was carrying the baby at all times, and we were wondering what could be happening. After all, they weren't giving us any information, and most people began to feel nervous. New York Center finally gives the crew of Avianca 52 the message they've been waiting for. Avianca 052 Heavy, Avianca Kennedy is 2400 feet. Can you accept an approach? That's an affirmative, sir. They think they're finally in the clear. Then, calamity. The foul weather and zero visibility forces several aircraft just ahead of them to abandon their landing attempts and make a second attempt. The controllers have bad news for the Colombian airliner. Uh, Avianca 052. Continue to the left, heading 230 vectors, holding a Cameron again. Another hold. Okay, 230 vectors for holding at Cameron. Kennedy, Avianca 052. Uh, Avianca 052, go ahead. Thank you, sir. You have any estimates, sir? Uh, Avianca 052 heavy. I might be able to get you in right now. Stand by. Thank you. The crew wait silently and hope. But when the reply comes, it's more bad news. Uh, Avianca 052, we just got off the line. Uh, it's indefinite holding at this time. The Avianca 052, turn left. Heading 090, hold that camera and maintain 1-1000. They've been held up for 48 minutes on the way here. Now they've been circling around for another 25 minutes, only a few miles from the safety of JFK Airport. They were progressively moving toward JFK and they were held in the air for three times. This certainly would put some stress on the crew uh, as to the fact they want to go from A to B they don't want to fly in a racetrack for an hour just holding. At 8.55, the cockpit voice recorder begins recording the last 40 minutes of Flight 52. The crew at this stage seem resigned, or are perhaps too timid to complain. Moments later, Avianca is given more unwelcome news. Uh, Avianca 052, expect for the clearance time 0205. Expect for the clearance in 20 minutes. It's now that the stress level in the cockpit begins to rise. 0205. Uh, well, I think we need priority. We are passing out of fuel. Avianca 052, Roger. Um, how long can you hold and what is your alternate? Okay, stand by a minute. The flight engineer quickly calculates the remaining fuel. Yes, sir. I will be able to hold for five minutes. That's all we can do. Avianca 052, Roger. And what's your alternate? We said Boston. But it's uh, full of traffic, I think. Uh, Avion 052, say alternate again. It was Boston, but uh, we can't do it now. We'd, we'll run out of fuel. Avion 052, uh, clear to Atlanta Kennedy via heading 040. Maintain 1 1000 at speed 180. The Avianca crew, when they felt okay, it, they the were airport. being handed off to an approach controller now and given a heading and a lower altitude. Uh, I'm sure in their minds they thought. Well, they even commented on a cockpit voice recorder. We're being handled or we're being taken care of. It's okay if I send four more your way. Uh, Casino, I'm back in the hold again. I, I got four in the stack and there's no end in sight. I, I can't keep your times. I'd be guessing if I did. This guy's killing me. Avianca 052 only has five more minutes in the hold. Uh, you going to be able to take him or I'll set him up to his alternate? What is his speed now? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Holding speed. Slow him to 180 and I'll take him. Uh, say again? Slow him to 180 knots and I'll take him. You guys holding a lot? Oh, man, we're holding all up and down the coast. Ah, oh, that's good practice, man. But in this critical handoff from one controller to the next, there is no specific mention of Avianca's critically low fuel. Uh, nobody told the next controller that. So the next controller, when Avianca came in on the frequency, the controller just said, right, I've got you, proceed to Kennedy, or I'm going to put you in a hold and uh, put them in a holding pattern over the last approach fix, the options were gone. Now the aircraft could only get into Kennedy. Avianca 
Avianca descend and maintain 7,000. Descending to 7,000. Avianca 052 heavy. Avianca 052, before you go, there is a wind shear alert on final at 1,500 feet. Turn left, heading 090. Left, heading 090. Avianca 052 heavy. The high level wind shear was passed on early on, so he was aware of that. But the low level wind shear below 500 feet was not passed on. After more than an hour and 17 minutes waiting for clearance to land, the crew of Flight 52 believe controllers on the ground are at last aware of their fuel emergency and are clearing the 707 for a priority landing. In the cabin, the flight attendants and passengers have no idea that their plane is dangerously low on fuel. Then the go-around procedure is stating that the power be applied slowly... In the cockpit, the crew now hastily discuss the go-around procedure, what the manual says they must do if they can't find the runway through the fog and low clouds and have to go around a second time. It's standard procedure. ...be applied slowly and to avoid rapid accelerations and to have a minimum of nose-up attitude. To maintain what? Minimum. Minimum nose-up attitude. That means... Flight engineer Moyano is concerned that if the captain were to pull up the plane's nose too sharply, all the remaining fuel would slosh to the back of the tank, causing engines to stop. ...covered on fuel during the go-around. What it means is it doesn't contain fuel for feeding itself and a flame-out could occur. And it is necessary to lower the nose again. Right now we are proceeding to the airport inbound. We have 27... 17 miles. Roger. This means we'll have hamburger tonight. Avianca, descend and maintain, uh, descend and maintain 3,000. Descend and maintain 3,000. Avianca 052 heavy. 3,000 feet. They got us. They're already vectoring us. No, they are descending us. And they are giving us priority. Avianca 052 heavy. Contact Kennedy Tower 119.1. Good day. Only minutes before landing, Flight 52 is handed off to a JFK tower controller whose shift is about to end. Avionica 052 Heavy, Kennedy Tower 22 left. You are number three following 727 traffic on a Niner Mile final. Avionica 052 Heavy, roger. Can I lower the landing gear yet? No, I think it's too early. If we lower the landing gear, we have to maintain a very high nose attitude. So desperately low is their fuel that the first officer wants to delay putting down the landing gear, which will increase the aircraft's drag requiring more power and using more of what little fuel they have remaining. I was so happy. For me, it was like a joy. I mean, we're going to land soon and this is going to be the end. Avianca 052, what is your airspeed? Avianca 052, 140 knots. Avianca 052, can you increase your airspeed 10 knots? 10? Okay, 10 knots, increasing. Increase, increase. 10 knots more. Tell me things louder because I'm not hearing it. Lower the gear. Gear down. Avianca 05, 222 left. Wind 190 at 20. Clear to land. Clear to land. Avianca 052 heavy. Wind check, please. 190 at 20. With the weather deteriorating and flying on fumes, the crew of Flight 52 will have only one chance of getting their 149 passengers safely on the ground. Avianca 052, say airspeed. 145 knots. Are we clear to land now? Yes, sir, we are clear to land. Stand by. Flaps 50. Landing checklist complete. It was extremely important that Avianca 52 landed on their first approach, JFK. The voice recorder revealed that the captain was certainly quite concerned about the fuel state, and he was talking uh, uh, aggressively with the first officer, uh, putting out flaps, getting the airplane configured. It was time for the flight engineer to say, this is the only approach we're going to be able to make. And he didn't. Give me 50. Flaps 50 now. All set for landing. Standing by for lights. Slightly below glide slope. 1,000 feet above field. Instruments cross-checked slightly below. Stand by for lights. Stand, Stand by. by. The wind is slightly from the left, 190 to 20. Below glide slope. With about 10 minutes of fuel remaining, and nearly four kilometers from the runway, Flight 52 finds itself flying into violent wind shear, forcing them to slow the plane down. 
they were getting like 60 knots of wind on the nose. And then as they descended on down through about 500 feet to the ground, they were down to 20 knots. So that, that's 40 knot change and 1,000 feet of elevation. That's a lot. This is the wind shear. Now the wind changes direction. It's pressing them down towards the ground. Glide slope. Glide slope. Seems great. 500 slope. feet. Glide slope. The captain desperately searches for the runway, but Train. it's shrouded in low clouds Train. and fog. Train. Lights. The runway, where is it? I don't see it. I don't see it. The plane's warning system is telling them that they're about to crash. Feet. Flight, Just four kilometers from touchdown, Flight 52 has been caught in violent wind shear. To save the plane, Captain Caviades applies full throttle, burning up more of the plane's precious fuel. Give me the landing gear up, landing gear up! The airplane was about 200 feet above the ground, about two miles from the runway, which was well below the glide slope and very dangerous. So the, the airplane almost crashed on its first approach. When you get a missed approach, now it changes the whole ball game. Request another traffic pattern. Executing a missed approach, Avianca 052 Heavy. The operation of pulling the plane up in the missed approach was a very violent one. I don't know what happened with the runway. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. I didn't see it. Aviaki 052, you are making a left turn, correct, sir? Tell him we are in emergency. 2,000 feet. That's right, to 180 on the heading, and uh, we'll try once again. We are running out of fuel. Okay. What did he say? I already advised him that we are going to attempt again. Advise him we are in emergency. Do you tell him? Yes, sir, I already advised him. But the tower controller, at the end of his shift, transfers Avianca 52 to his counterpart in approach control. They'll have to begin all over again. Contact approach on 118.4. Approach, Avianca 052 heavy. We just missed a, a missed approach and we are maintaining 2000. Flaps 14. Avianca 052 heavy, New York. Good evening. Climb and maintain 3000. Advice and we don't have fuel. Climb and maintain 3000. Uh, we are running out of fuel, sir. Okay, fly heading 080. Did you already advise him we don't have fuel? Yes, sir, I already advised him. We are going to maintain 3,000 and he's going to get us back. As they get back in the pattern and circle the field and come back in again. That again adds to the traffic jam that was being created at Kennedy Airport. Avianca 052 Heavy, yeah. Uh... I'm going to turn you about 15 miles northeast and then bring you back onto the approach. Is that okay with you and your fuel? What did he say? The guy is angry. Uh, I guess so. Thank you very much. These guys were out, and they didn't say we were out. And he allowed the approach control to vector him way out in the original pattern and 15 miles north of the outer marker again. Flight 52 was instructed to fly a long approach pattern for another landing attempt. The plane is down to its last dregs of fuel as the crew waits for final clearance from ground controllers. And then they were run way out towards Long Island and vectored all around, which was equivalent to holding for another 15, 20 minutes. Do you get clearance yet? Can you give us a final yet? Avianca 052 Heavy. Avianca 052. Affirmative, sir. Turn left, heading 040. Climb and maintain 3000. Negative, sir. We are running out of fuel. OK, turn left, heading 310, sir. Set flaps 14. Okay, and you're number two for the approach. I just have to give you enough room so you can make it without uh, having to come out again. Okay, we're number two and flying 360 now. Avianca 052 Heavy, turn left, heading 330. The lights in the aircraft start to flicker, a sign that the engines are being starved of fuel. 330 on the heading, Avianca 052. Once there's no fuel flowing through the pump out of the tank, an amber light comes on to tell you that tank is empty. Flame out! Flame out on engine number four! Flame out on it! Flame out on engine number three! Come the runway. 
the passengers can hear the sound of the engines beginning to shut down. When the engines went off, I looked over to the lady that was sitting next to me, and I asked her to give me her hand. And I philosophically accepted, you know, I, I might die here. This, this is it. The LK052, we just uh, lost two engines, and we need priority, please. The LK052. Turn left, heading 250, intercept the localizer. 250, roger. Select the ILS. ILS. The LK052, you're one five miles from the outer marker. Maintain 2000 until established in the localizer. Cleared for ILS, 22 left. Roger, Avianca. You select the ILS. It's ready on two. When all the engines flame out and the generators uh, fall off the line, uh, a considerable amount of power is lost, electrical power is lost. In the cabin, the, the screams, the crying, and then this terrible sound of the wind against the fuselage as the plane drops from the sky. Lost. And the is missing due to the weather thing. Yeah, Avianca 52 lost an engine. We're trying to find out why. Yeah, we're no longer talking to Avianca. He's 15 northeast of Kennedy. Ah, wonderful. Equipper 18, turn left, heading 180. Six and a half hours after leaving Columbia, Avianca Flight 52 is missing somewhere over New York. I live in Cove Neck in Oyster Bay, and there is a plane crashed in our uh, yard in front of our house. When I woke up, I, I was uh, the first thing that I did. I was I put my hand over here in my back, and I was bleeding. I said, "Oh my God, we crashed." Both my legs were broken, and I had you know blood all over the place. I, I, el, el en el que estaba sentada la hija mía, si que the seat lleno, where my daughter was sitting was de, totally de, destroyed by pieces de, of steel de, that happened de, to have come from the wing. De hierro que entraron del ala y lo es. I found my baby Daniela amongst the pieces of a torn up, twisted chair. And I picked her up like this, and she was drenched in blood. Avianca Flight 52 has crashed on Long Island, New York, less than 28 kilometers from JFK Airport. From deep in the woods, medical technician Bob O'Brien can hear the survivors before he can see the shattered 707. What I first heard was there were just some people who were crying in pain, but it was apparent immediately what had happened when the plane hit the mountain and just stopped dead. It just fell out of the sky. That's how witnesses describe the crash of Avianca Flight 52, a strangely silent crash. There was not a big fire here. That will make it easier for investigators to examine if there were any gas or engine problems. There have been reports of lightning in the area just before the plane went down. For the controller's union says that Kennedy is critically understaffed, a problem that is compounded by bad weather. Rescuers have not yet given up on finding more victims. Lo primero que me acuerdo es que yo miro y First thing I remember is that I looked up and I saw a priest. He was praying for me and I was lying down on the ground. Y right above us I saw three or four helicopters flying over us. Cuatro helicópteros volando encima mío. managed to get up on top of the fuselage and there's that door handle that says in case of emergency pull here so I pulled that door handle and that door handle just went and the door came open about four inches and then I was able to flip that over and I could just see piles and piles of people strapped in their seats the extreme g-force of the crash has broken off the cockpit and catapulted it through a stand of trees and into the deck of a home some 30 meters from the impact site.
Come on, somebody get the back here. And I saw some cables and I saw a big hole in the fuselage over the passengers that were sitting next to me who were kind of unconscious. And on top of me was this guy who was bleeding, and big guy, I don't know who he was, but he was on top of me, but I was sitting. I pulled myself with those cables to, towards that hole, which was over the wing. I started screaming, hey, help me out, help me, take me out of here. And then somebody, when they realized that I was alive, they, they, they removed the, I mean, they took away the guy who was on top of me, and they, they took me out of the airplane. At that moment, a fireman was climbing on the wing, and he saw me, and he said, there's a guy here, and he pulled me out. Thirty-seven fire and rescue companies from Nassau County are quickly mobilized. The rescue is the largest pre-9-11 operation of its kind in the New York area. That little girl was sitting up on the fuselage and she was crying, mi madre, mi madre. And that imprint of horror just was, you know, you just in your mind's eye focus right back in on I saw me, Madre. I saw her mother. And I know what that little girl was seeing. It was horrible enough for me, and I'm a professional rescuer. I realized that my baby was dying. So I began to scream. Please help me. I had to baby here. Please. The plane has crashed in the wealthy neighborhood of Cove Neck near the home of the father of tennis star John McEnroe. Medics set up a makeshift triage unit on his lawn. When daylight breaks 10 hours later, 85 survivors have been pulled from the wreck. The lead flight attendant is the only member of crew to survive the crash. Of the 11 babies on board Flight 52, all but one are found alive. Bob O'Brien scours the tail section for survivors and finds FAA investigators struggling to remove the aircraft's black boxes. I grabbed the handle and just pulled the whole box out and took that out and brought that out the door and, and gave it to them. Even as people are being pulled from the wreckage, the on-site investigation begins. In charge on the ground is Barry Trotter of the National Transportation Safety Board. A former airline pilot, Trotter became an investigator after losing his right arm in a motorcycle accident. The condition of the aircraft was really astonishing to see that that much of the structure was left in the condition that it was in. Unaware of the details of Avianca's troubled flight, investigators quickly find a valuable piece of evidence. You could look at the engines right away and you could tell the engines were not turning. So there was no power on the engines. It, that, that was the first, first big clue. Trotter and his team examine the fuel tanks and find just a few gallons of jet fuel still on board. It becomes clear why the 707's engines stop turning, but the question of who's to blame is still to be answered. In the community of Cove Neck, New York, salvage workers begin the task of dismantling the shattered remains of Avianca Flight 52. But there's still one critical question. Who is responsible for Flight 52 running out of fuel and causing the death of 72 passengers and crew? The answer will be worth millions of dollars and affect dozens of lives. At the lab of the National Transportation Safety Board in Washington, D.C., investigators are eager to recover data locked inside the two black boxes. The most telling of these is often the flight data recorder, which records critical information, such as the plane's altitude, airspeed, and heading. When we got recovered the flight data recorder and brought it to our lab in Washington, we opened it and found that the, the foil wrap had, was not hooked up. So someone had actually intentionally taped the end of the foil so it wouldn't fly around and put it back in the airplane. 
Without the crucial flight data recorder, investigators rely heavily on Flight 52's cockpit voice recorder, which is found with more than 40 minutes of voice recordings of the crew and communications between the first officer and air traffic controllers. Yes, sir, we are clear to land. Stand by. All set for landing. Low glide slope. And it was apparent from the voice recorder transcript and tape that the captain was not understanding the first officer's radio communications that were being made in English. Everybody wants to blame the pilot, but he may be the last person to make a decision. And the scenario which caused him to be in that position where he makes the decision was created by several other people along the route. The captain uh, asked the first officer about nine times to uh, clarify information or repeat it or uh, to pass on information. We are going to attempt again. Advise we are in an emergency. Do you tell him? Did he make a conscious decision to run out of fuel? No. He was sucked into a situation by the air traffic controllers where he ran out of fuel. Glide slow! The cockpit voice recorder reveals a crew desperate to land the 707 in near zero visibility and in extreme wind shear without the aid of an autopilot. In this case, the captain uh, had a difficult time maintaining the glide slope during the approach with the wind shear, didn't see the airport, and had to make a go around. That almost uh, doomed the airplane at that point. The uh, information being given to pilots en route was a, a wind shear up as high as 1,500 feet, but their uh, pilots on approach were encountering wind shear as low as 300 feet, and that wasn't passed on to the Avianca pilot. The crew of Flight 52 is caught off guard. As they descend below 150 meters and slow down, a violent vertical wind forces them towards the ground, nearly causing the plane to crash less than four kilometers short of the runway. Ironically, Avianca 52's lack of fuel resulted in no fire or explosion, saving the survivors from almost certain death. If the flight would have found some level ground, it was conceivable he would have slapped the fuselage down and slid to a stop. With no fuel, there would have been no fire. And I think it's very possible that most of the people would have survived it in that case. One transmission about As the hearings into the crash begin, lawyer George Tompkins is confronted by controllers who maintain that the Avianca crew failed to use the word emergency, instead using the word priority to communicate their situation. The government took the position that the pilot never declared an emergency, so no one uh, knew that he had a problem. But saying you're getting low on fuel and saying you're getting, you, you cannot make your alternate, the word emergency is not necessary to say. Negative, sir. We are running out of fuel. We just uh, uh, lost two engines and we need priority, please. And they thought they were telling them when they said we need priority. Para nosotros en español, la palabra prioridad in Spanish, for us, the word priority means first. Attend to me, run to me, I need you right now. I don't know if priority in other languages means that you can wait. Avianca 05 Tony has five more minutes in the hold. Uh, you going to be able to take him or I'll set him up to his alternate? What is his speed now? Uh, I'm not sure to be quite honest with you. Holding speed. The NTSB concludes that air traffic's handling of Avianca 52 was proper, considering the information they were getting from the flight crew. Many of the passengers are shocked and outraged by what they feel is a gross injustice, that air traffic control is found blameless. Avianca sues the Federal Aviation Administration, which employs the air traffic controllers saying they should have done more when Flight 52 told them they were running out of fuel. The FAA settles and ends up paying around 40% of the estimated $200 million compensation due to the victims. If you listen and read the tapes, uh, the transcripts of the tapes of each air route traffic control center along the route, and the final, the New York Tracon, New York Tower, Kennedy Tower, you'll find 20 places where this accident could have been avoided if somebody had done something differently. 
Among the 85 survivors who escaped the shattered remains of Flight 52 are the Montoya's two daughters. Daniela, the baby covered in blood, is now a healthy teenager preparing for college. The day just before the flight, we took a long trip to visit the Virgin Mary. This is a very important sanctuary in Medellin. Perhaps it was a miracle of God and the Virgin that the four of us survived. It was a miracle, and we feel blessed by that. For many of the survivors, recovering from their injuries has been easier than coming to terms with the reason why Flight 52 ran out of fuel. I had to learn to walk from scratch. It's difficult enough to deal with the injuries. It makes me very angry to think that, 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 that a plane went down with 161 souls and had almost half the people lost their lives because, because of, uh, of a word. Thank you.